I'm one of the few people that can point to one particular moment in life in which my whole life changed. I was 18. I just graduated from high school. I was working at uh, James Madison University in festival in like the dining hall. I was making sub sandwiches, salads, and flipping pancakes, and I hated that job. And I was on my break. I went to the Guitar and Amp Center, a really cool guitar shop in my hometown. I'd shopped there since I was 14 or so. And Warren, who owned the shop, said, hey, Jeremy, good to see you. Hey, I have a guitar. I want you to just tell me what you know about this. And he walks over and he shows me a Martin D45. And I can see the giant abalone. I can see the abalone around the fretboard extension. And he asked me what I know. And so I look at it. I flip it around. I look at the tuners. I look at the serial number. I look at a couple things on how it's made. And I realize, like, hey, this is a early 60s uh, D45. And it's really cool. And uh, he asked me how much I thought it was worth, and I told him. And then he just kind of looked at me with this kind of excited, proud look, and he said, man, that's that's amazing that you know all of that. You wanna come work for me? And so I immediately, I couldn't believe that I was being asked to come work at my favorite place. Like this is the place that as soon as I had any time off, I would wanna go and spend time there. And so Warren said, hey, can you come work for me? And I said, sure. And he said, when can you start? I was like, I'll go quit my job right now. I literally went from the guitar shop, went over and said, I'm not gonna come back for my shift tomorrow, which is a dick move. I should have given some notice, but I was 18, I was young, and I had a great opportunity. So I jumped in at the Guitar and Amp Center, and within a few months, man, this was my place to be. I just, my whole life has changed. And one of the ways in which my life has looped back around in a really beautiful way is a guitar that I have to show you today. When I was 18, the first vintage guitar I ever bought, well, let me tell you a couple things. When I was 18, I, I was making $7 an hour at the Guitar and Amp Center, $7 an hour and my rent was $118 a month and my college tuition was about $1,800 plus $600 so call it $2,300, $2,400 per semester uh, for me to go to college. And so there was no possible room for me to buy guitars. But my first vintage guitar I bought was a 1964 Guild D40 and it was beautiful and awful in basically equal measure. It was an incredibly cool sounding guitar that played really hard, had incredibly high action, um, and it had a terrible refinish. Like someone had shellacked, like literally shellac, and they had brushed over the bridge, over the pick guard, over the fretboard extension, and so I did a lot of work on that guitar to, uh, to file off, sand off, use a razor blade to cut off that varnish off of the bridge, off of the pick guard, and I tried to bring this guitar back to life the best I could. That guitar went with me across the country. At that point, I was starting to travel and starting to play music around the country and starting to just have other opportunities that would have me all around the world, uh, the country. And that guitar came with me and it just, it stuck with me for so long. Now it never played great and I had a bunch of different pickups in it. None of them ever sounded that great, but I just loved this guitar and there was, uh, it took me a year to pay off. I mean, $400 um, and it took me a year uh, to pay that guitar off but it was completely worth it. And it has set me on the course that I'm on now, on the guitar hunting path, just because I got that opportunity to work in that guitar shop and then I got to own that guitar and it's just so cool. So when the opportunity to buy another D40 came up, I had to take it. So I have to show you this guitar. This is a Guild D40. This one is from 1971. And it has a couple things that are very specifically similar and the same to my D40 from 64, but it also has a few things that are really different and I'm not totally sure I'm into. The first thing you're gonna notice about this guitar is this incredible spruce top. Now it has a really beautiful golden color to it and this big full-size guild pick guard. The other thing you're gonna notice, and I'm not sure if this is original, but the bridge itself is gigantic. And I wonder if it's a repro bigger bridge than how it was. You'll also notice a pretty low saddle, but this guitar does play really well. 
The other things that are noteworthy on this guitar are the back and sides are mahogany and they are a beautiful amber, golden, very rich kind of mahogany color and they're it's really, really well done. The other thing that is so critically important about this guitar and so memorable to me and just fills me with so much nostalgia is that classic Guild Regal headstock. Uh, it's especially beautiful from behind when you get to see this guitar in your left hand and you get to see just that giant, big, sculpted headstock. It's, I mean, it's very just iconic mid-century, maybe a little Art Deco. Now on the front of this guitar, this is a D40. It's not a D40 Bluegrass Jubilee. The Bluegrass Jubilee would have a more uh, eccentric or just a more ornate headstock. This guitar still has the original open gear tuners. These flat paddles, they almost look like uh, not Tic Tacs, what are they? Uh, chiclets, or like little gum. They're not excellent tuners, but they are original, and they work pretty well so far. The nut seems to be original, and so does the saddle. This guitar all in, once you take this guitar in, it is just a beautiful time capsule of the mid-60s. Of that, of that, You would see why uh, the kind of music would come out of this guitar that came out of that same time period that it came from. It is folky and has some bluesiness to it, and it has a very... Uh, just subtle and nuanced kind of guitar tone to it. Now, this guitar does have a modern style pickup in it. This guitar has a, an LR Bags Lyric. This is an incredible pickup. It's a microphone inside the guitar, and it actually sounds really good. Now, it's not put in excellently, and so it does need a little bit of TLC. There's just a little bit of cable management that needs to occur. That's the first thing I noticed is that you can just see that battery wire pretty loose in there. So what I'm going to do is restring the guitar, take it out, and just make sure that it is put back together to where the pickup is secured to the sides of the guitar, not to the top or the back. And, uh, and just to make sure that this guitar has the absolute best chance it can to sound and play great. <laughs> One thing we have to talk about is the case on this guitar. It, I've, I've never seen one quite like this. It is absolutely wonderful. It reminds me of some Martins from that same time period, but this guitar, the first thing that catches my eye is just this beautiful, iconic, kind of fluffy, puffy looking Guild logo, the more scripted logo. It is just a really, really, um, it tells you so much of the time and the style and the design and what would go into a guitar from this time period. This case is unbelievable. Now there is one, the latch on the back of, I think on the headstock, the rivets have pulled out. Not the end of the world, but it's just a little thing that you might need to pay attention to. You could repair, um, but uh, yeah, I don't think there's enough material to rivet it, but you could maybe do a, a nut and a washer and, and a bolt and put that back together. But Incredible case, super cool, tons of mojo on this thing, and just who doesn't like 
a 60s arch top case. Now it does have a couple things that are worth mentioning. It has a bit of a sitar situation with the high E, particularly if it's in dadged or lower tunings. Um, and so basically there's not enough brake angle off that saddle. And so what more than likely needs to happen, and I'll probably take this down to Danny, to the fret boss in Stanton, Virginia, have him ramp that bridge. It'll do a couple things. The first thing is it will give me more brake angle. And so with that, it will get rid of that sitar kind of buzzy t t sound that the high E string tends to have. Now the other thing that ramping a bridge does, if you're not familiar with this, is that it's going to give you more energy transfer from the strings into the top of the guitar. And so it should add just a little bit more tone, a little bit more liveliness to the guitar in its playability and to its tone. The way in which this guitar is the most unlike my D40, well, there's two main things. One, the condition is so much better on this, has the original finish. Now, there are a couple cracks in the guitar in the top, and so it's a great guitar, but this guitar came from the desert, so it does not bother me. It came from Arizona. Now, the other way in which this guitar is the most unlike my D40 and other guilds I've owned. Most of those are identified as like a big U-shaped neck or a D-shaped neck. This, The neck on this guitar is unlike any other guild that I've ever played. Now it's the original finish, so I don't think that anything has been happened as far as modifications to change the shape of the neck afterwards, but this guitar is absolutely, uh, it's a pencil neck. Like it's very thin, but it's incredibly fun to play. This guitar is so cool. And I'm so thankful that I get to have this thing that reminds me of where I've been, where I am and where I'm headed. Now, I don't know if this guitar will be with me forever because I have a lot of guitars and uh, that's a hard part is uh, I'm kind of moving. I'm, I'm at a place where I have a lot of guitars. So, I'm gonna hold this one with open hands. I'm gonna have it around as long as I can. It's an incredible guitar. Uh, and so, anyway, with all of that said, thanks for watching this video. I'm Jeremy, I'm the Guitar Hunter. This is an incredible guitar, and it, it came through a friend, came from my friend Aaron. Aaron is an amazing tattoo artist in Arizona. I'll put his link down in the description down below. If you're around that world, if you like tattoos, if you like guitars in Arizona, he is your guy.